At the corners of Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah is located the Navajo Indian Reservation, an area of 16 million acres filled with traditions of a people whose ancestors roamed the rolling terrain long before the white man. The Navajo Reservation is a nation within a nation governed long by the rules of its own tribal council. It is a land of solitude and quietness, of warm golden cliffs, of narrow canyons and valleys, of great mesas and yellow sands, a land of ancient splendor painted with red, purple, and luminous shadows, a land that changes with the changing sun. Populated by a proud, peaceful, and pastoral people, the Navajo country is a land of contrasts, where today's people are living on ground hallowed by their ancestors, looking forward to the future of many brilliant tomorrows. Great lovers of jewelry, the Navajo woman wears bracelets of heavy silver and other decorative ornaments. It is a country of unending majesty and charm, rich in scenic beauty. Where monument-type mountains push their peaks into the azure blue skies. Where castle-like rocks in Monument Valley raise their heads in awe-inspiring spectacles. where wooded uplands bespeak peace and tranquility, where sandy valleys beckon to man. Much of the terrain is barren and foreboding. But millions of fertile acres await only life-giving water to transform them into rich agricultural land. Probably best known for their weaving and silver work, the Navajos are usually skilled artisans. The products of their hands have made the work Navajo synonymous with beautiful handicraft the world over. The chief interest of the Navajo is the land, for essentially he is an agriculturalist and stockman. The Navajos love the soil from which they earn their livelihood and the various animals, the horses, sheep and goats they raise on the land. Their hearts are as big as the area in which they live. Methods of food preparation have remained unchanged for generations. The corn is gathered by hand in the fields where it grows. Cut from the cob with sharp knives, ground between two stones into nutritious meal, mixed into bread, and fried over an open fire. Navajos love their great outdoors. They cultivate and harvest the crops in the fields under the life-giving sunshine, the broad open prairies. The awe-inspiring mountain peaks, the hills and valleys of their ancestors. The open air. Their homes are known as hogans. With the coming of the hot summer months, they move their meager belongings to open air shelters from the warmer winter quarters so they may enjoy nature to the fullest extent. Here, the family life is undisturbed and uninterrupted. Children play with their pets, drive the sheep to and from the water holes, Enjoy the companionship of brothers and sisters 
while father and mother go about their daily tasks. The Navajo man is proud of his hair. Soap root, a wild cactus-like plant which grows abundantly in the area, provides the cleanser. It is dug from the ground, beaten into a spongy pulp, and used to wash the hair. Then it is combed, securely tied, and worn in a knot on the back of the neck. In rug weaving, the Navajo woman is unexcelled. It is her pride and joy, the creation of her own mind and hands. Making of a rug starts with dyeing of the yarn, done by hand in open wash basins, using dyes made from herbs so abundant in the area. Knowledge of these plants and the colors they produce is handed down from mother to daughter. A woman's ability as a rug weaver is a major factor in determining her social standing in the clan. The one who can create the most beautiful and artistic rug is looked upon with admiration and respect by her fellow tribe's people. The rug pattern is created in her own mind and executed with only the mental image as a guide, no written or printed pattern to direct her hands as they move with ease and dexterity to the completed product. No two Navajo rugs are ever alike. Each is an individual creation. The Navajo man is frequently a skilled silversmith, a trade he learned from his father, passed down from generation to generation, just as the rug weaving skill is taught by the mother. Here again, the Navajo shows his inborn love of beauty and originality for his creations are indeed masterpieces. In the field, the man and wife work side by side. Under the canopy of the heavens, they till the soil, plant the seeds, cultivate and harvest the crop. Tools used are essentially the same that have been employed for generations hand tools requiring hours of laborious toil in the open sun. Nowhere is pride of family more apparent than among the Navajos. The infant child is an object of loving and tender care for both parents. Although the mother is chiefly responsible for the physical needs of the baby, the father likewise has his part in rearing the family a responsibility discharged by both parents with pride and eager delight. Each family has its own herd of sheep or goats from which they obtain milk to drink, meat for the table, wool for clothing and blankets, and skins to cover their floors and hogans. Care of the livestock is a responsibility of all members of the family, the women having their part in this essential work. Often the animals are driven to the water holes and to pasture and back home at night by the wife and children. Milk from the milch goat is a most important item of food for the Navajo family a domestic chore usually falling to the wife and older children. The Navajo Reservation is under supervision of the United States Department of Interior. At Window Rock, Arizona, 
is located the Department of Interior Agency. It is a scenic part of the reservation. The administration, however, is largely by the tribal council, select men chosen from the tribe. The trader and the trading post play a vital part in the life of the Navajo. Typical of the many trading posts found throughout the reservation is the one at the entrance to Monument Valley. The trader lives in the trading post and his success depends upon the manner in which he is accepted by the people. The shelves of the trading post are stocked with food and merchandise. The Navajo woman brings the blanket she has so skillfully created a product of her own hands to exchange for articles from the trader's shelves. It is largely a system of friendly barter. Items of food are set out on the counter, canned tomatoes, peas, plums, beans, sugar, candies, food for the family's needs and for the long days ahead, articles essential to their daily existence here also, the Navajo meets with friends and neighbors, maintains social contact with one another. Finally, the exchange is completed. The Navajo mother takes the box of provisions in her arms and begins the long journey back to her family. And her blanket will become a cherished decoration in some faraway home. The rodeo is an important event in the tribal life. Posters announcing the Navajo rodeo are placed where they will be seen by the Navajos as they come to market, and word of the event then is passed from mouth to mouth. Navajos are great lovers of sports of every type. They are courageous athletes and possess great physical strength and endurance, and enter into competitive sports with energy-filled enthusiasm. The Navajo Rodeo is a joyous event eagerly awaited. Here they gather for social contacts and to match their athletic skills with their fellow tribesmen. From miles around, the Navajo families come for the big event, man, wife, and children. In modern automobiles, in wagons, on horseback, some to stay until the rodeo is over, camping by their cars or wagons in the great outdoors. Others to return to their hogans at night. It is a gay occasion as the riders line up for the opening of the rodeo in preparation for a drama of strength and weakness, of man against beast, of conquering and being conquered. Steer riding is one of the rodeo features, and there are usually some rough ones. Time and again, an animal is released from the corral to come bucking out into the arena, twisting from side to side, where the rider is sometimes thrown in three or four jumps. Others stay longer. And then there may be diversion as the clown entertains the crowd. Bronc riding gets its full share of attention as the range wild ponies are hustled into the chutes and the cinches are pulled tight. The rider eases himself into the saddle and away he goes for an unpredictable ride. One of the favorite events is the wild cow milking. This is run against the clock just like calf roping and steer riding. Another major event is horse racing and the Navajo is a skilled horseman. Attractive missions have been erected in the Navajo country by many of the major Christian denominations seeking to present the Christian way of life. But the rank and file of the Navajos continue to observe the rituals that have been handed down from their ancestors. To better prepare himself for life, the Navajo needs many additional schools throughout the reservation. 
the Tribal Council is exerting every effort toward this end. Perhaps the most desperate physical need of the country is water. The annual rainfall is meager and little provision has been made for conserving it. With irrigation, these parched, wasted lands would blossom with new life, be transformed into fertile fields and growing gardens. Many times it is miles from the Hogan to the nearest water. A favorite spot is the water hole or well at the trading post, especially during the summer months. Every drop of water for drinking, cooking, laundry, and sometimes even for livestock must be carried for miles in pails or on donkeys. It is a laborious task performed with enduring patience. Recently, vast deposits of uranium have been discovered in the Navajo Hills. This rare natural resource is becoming increasingly important in the development of atomic power. Royalties from the uranium mines are providing much needed cash for the Navajo prospector and for the tribe. The hills resound with a whir of modern machinery. Many of the Navajo men are employed in the uranium mines where they are valued as conscientious workers. Day by day, they take their places in operating power machinery and the numerous other jobs about the mines, thus providing profitable employment for many of the tribe. The first love of the Navajo will always be his native land, a land of unending beauty. A land where the ancient intermingles with the modern. A land where his ancestors lived in peace and tranquility and passed on to meet their gods and where he too wants to make his home until he at last completes his lifespan. Yes, in the land of God's great outdoors, where grandeur and majesty are ever-present witnesses to the panorama of life.